The data vault concept was first introduced by Dan Lindstedt in 2000. It started as just an alternative data model for data warehousing, but by 2013, Lindstedt had built out an entire data vault architecture and published building a scalable data warehouse with data vault 2.0. Let's take a look at this data warehouse design and see if it might be right for you. The goal of the data vault design is to address some of the weaknesses of the other data warehouse design formats. Check these videos if you aren't familiar with the Kimball and Inman data warehousing designs. The data vault is designed to be built incrementally, minimizing rework when adding new sources and data structures. A problem with many warehouse projects is providing value early. The goal with the data vault is getting up and running quickly. Another goal is adaptability to change. To support this business logic and calculations are pushed further down the process. Data is taken from the source and stored without change, then adjusted for business use later. This clear separation allows for changes in business logic while still having the raw data available, minimizing the need for changes to the data model as business rules change over time. This also helps with the increasing demand for data lineage, or knowing where a specific data point came from. This is a big shift in purpose of the data warehouse from presenting a single source of truth, where the data has been pre-cleansed, to presenting all of the data, all of the time. The core architecture of the data vault revolves around the raw vault. This is where source data is stored, it is remodeled but otherwise unchanged. Duplicates, conflicting values, and consistent labels are all kept. There is a staging layer to hold and prep source data. This can handle batch processes as well as streaming data. Business rules and calculations can be applied to parts of the raw data and stored on a layer on top of the raw vault called the business vault. A reporting layer is added that will contain dimensionalized data marts designed for reports. Often these are views. This is where the data is cleaned, security controls added, and specific business needs are met. And a data lake may be used at the front to store raw data files for auditing, ad hoc usage, data exploration, or future unknown needs. The key modeling happens in the raw vault. The core idea is that the business keys only change with significant business changes, so they are the most stable. Picking business keys for data is critical, and then those keys are separated from the attribute data in key tables called hubs. Hubs contain a list of unique business keys unlikely to change. They also have a surrogate key for each hub record and the metadata describing the origin of the key. Hubs are connected through link tables. These contain associations or transactions between hubs, and they are often many-to-many -many joins. They also contain keys and the metadata relating to the keys. While hubs and links create the model of how all the data is connected, they contain no descriptive attributes. These are stored in satellite tables. The attributes are loaded with metadata of when, where, and effective dates of when the data was loaded, creating a history of data at a point in time. In dimensional model terms, satellites are always type 2 form. Finally, reference tables are used to prevent redundant storage of data that is frequently referenced, such as lookup codes or business descriptions of values. For example, let's look at the source containing sales data. We'll separate out important attributes into hubs. We have customer data and order data. Our customers and orders are connected through a customer order link table. The attribute data for each hub and link is put into satellite tables and connected to their parent table. And lookup data is put into reference tables to be used when needed. The general ETL process for a data vault is to load all the hubs, creating surrogate IDs for new business keys. Next, loading any links between hubs, creating new surrogate keys for any new relationships. Then create all satellites that are attached to hubs, followed by adding all the satellites attached to links. All data is kept in stored, so only insert statements are used, simplifying ETL patterns. Since objects in each layer never connect to each other, they can all be loaded simultaneously, allowing for concurrent ETL. Due to the many relationships, the data vault is not optimized for reporting or connecting to business intelligence tools. Commonly, data marts are built on top of the data vault as a presentation layer, using hubs and their satellites as dimensions, and links and their satellites as facts. Naming, business logic, and data cleaning can be done to present the data in a way that meets users' expectations. Then reporting is done using those dimensional data marts. The Data Vault tries to address many of the weaknesses of other data warehousing architectures. Incremental builds that can handle many sources, adaptability to change, tracking data lineage, quick and easy to automate ETL. However, they may not be ideal in all cases. In systems with few sources or ones with very static data with limited changes, the added overhead of the data vault's numerous layers, tables, and design complexity may offset any additional value. 
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.